Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast and game one in a series between Liquids TLO versus LGIM first here on Daybreak. First spawning as the blue Protoss player on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, Liquid TLO spawning as the red Zerg. Red versus blue, I believe this was taken from IEM. So if you guys have already seen this game, you will get another interpretation on it. Now, Protoss versus Zerg, one of those matchups we are very, very familiar with. And we are going to be seeing most likely a Forge fast expansion come in from first. Pylon should be warping in here on Daybreak. Now, Daybreak is one of those maps that I do feel Zerg has a slight advantage. One of the reasons why is a very easy to take third. All TLO needs to do is he needs to slip outside, set up this hatchery down over here, utilizing the faster movement speed on the Overlord, scout out what his opponent is doing, and then decide whether or not to take up a quick third base sometime around the 4 minute mark. Now, also coming in from first, first pretty much feels confident that even if TLO does go for a third base that he can stop it. You can see that first is not scouting out with a probe whatsoever. He is not going to try and do any pylon blocking at all. And this shows first is confident in, uh, in taking out TLO even if it does turn into a macro game. We are seeing the drone now make its way down. We'll see if it does in fact grow up to be a hatchery. Poor drone though, he will not try to harvest any minerals before growing up and being a hatchery, unlike an SCV or a probe. Now, coming back around, it looks like first is going to be going for a nexus first. Nexus first, combating a hatchery first. TLO will make a move over, spot this nexus, notice that there is no forge and that there is no gateway, and then he may try and slip out with another hatchery. You can see that the drone is already making its way down. We'll see if it's there for scouting purposes. No, it is in fact going to be a fast expansion attempt. And this is a very, very greedy third hatchery as TLO is setting this up before his spawning pool. So double hatch before spawning pool here on Daybreak as the Overlord is simply going to fly overhead, perhaps park itself off right here and gain a lot of scouting information. Now, first is going to come in, take a look around. He's going to spot the hatchery. He knows the timing. He knows that it is a hatchery first. He's going to also take a look at the spawning pool. And he may wonder, wait, this spawning pool looks a little bit late. By looking at the spawning pool, how much life is left on it, the probe is going to check that third base and go, you know what, I am going to be fighting up against a three base Zerg. This is all very important to note, knowing that first does not have to waste too many photon cannons trying to guard as he'll just be able to warp in a cybernetics core here momentarily. Now, what is first looking to do? First is gleaming all the information that he wants and he can so far. The forge is already down. We are already getting into double gas in the main for that faster level one weapons upgrade and also that all important warp gate tech. Probe still just dancing around and so far I don't expect any real action until about the 8 minute mark. Both of these players are just setting up their pieces, setting up their units in a position where they can perhaps attack and perhaps surprise their opponent. Now, I am curious as to why first is actually going for double zealots at this point. This is something that you do not normally see. Um, double zealot perhaps just in case there is very very strong aggression. Um, first is going to be sitting on these zealots for quite some time with really nothing to do with them. As he does also have a photon cannon operational. Overlords of TLO going to get all the scouting information that they want perhaps hiding off in the corner and it is going to be up to first to figure out what strategy he is going for. Production tab, let's take a look at the number of probes. It does look like there is about 16 in the main on the minerals and only 8 on the minerals back over here at the natural expansion. I haven't seen any additional gateways yet, but we are going into a robotics facility. Um, training, we are also going into one or two sentries right now and we have to keep a track on the sentries. If we are going very, very heavy sentries, this could be a two base immortal sentry all in. Stalker now gonna go ahead and chase down an overlord. Hello, Arya. 
All right, apparently my daughter wants a lesson in StarCraft. And who am I to say no? All right. Go, go. StarCraft. Yes, StarCraft. Okay. Whoa. Well, I'm sorry. And if I'm a little bit too soft, I apologize. There is... My daughter is on my lap. Taking a look here, we can see three additional warp gates now coming in. Ooh, the probes are now making their way down. And we are going into warp prism play, which is a very strong indication of a two base immortal century all in. Um, if she squirms around too much, sure. All right. So far, level one weapons upgrades. Now nearing completion, we may see the armor upgrades as well. This is going to be four gateways. To, um, four gateways, one warp prism. I am surprised that there is no immortal yet. Perhaps first is trying to go for a bit of harassment first. There is that double sentry being picked up. We should see perhaps two more units warped in. Um, the warp prism may try to just tr go into power mode or phase mode first. Warp in two more units, pick it up, and then move along its merry way as the sentries are already making their way across the map. Overlords. Now going to get shot down by one sentry there. There is the additional warp in. It is going to be four zealots. The sentry, or the sentry is still staying inside that warp prism. And here we go. All right, wait, nope. Deciding to back off again, perhaps waiting for another round of warp in. Level two weapons upgrade now coming in as well. As the stalkers are going to try and engage. The sentries are now making a move in. The zealots are going to be fighting on creep. This is not going to be good. And oh, catching a queen in a perfect, absolute perfect position there. That was a beautiful, beautiful one force field wall as the zealots are now charging in. Let's see what's going to be happening here. Sentries are going to be engaging. Queens are not able to retreat once more. Some beautiful force field placement. As the Zerglings are now trying to come in as well. TLO in trouble as first has just caught all of TLO's units out of position. Beautifully done as the Zealots are now looking to clean up this third base. It's going to be up to TLO to perhaps try to mount a counterattack. Is it going to work though? I do not believe so. As we can see the sentries, the expensive units are being picked up. Broodlings are coming out to join in on the fight. But that is just going to be... Um, just a small, small number of units as we see the Roaches and Zerglings now backing off again. Alright, there's a force field. Another force field not in time. The Roach is turning around, getting off an easy shot against some of these units here. There's another force field catching some Roaches on the wrong side of a force field as down they go. However, the Zealots are low on hit points. TLO may be able to deal significant damage here and stop this attack before it um, snowballs into anything too large. All right, the Zealot has been taken down. We can see a new hatchery coming into play. Sentries and Zealots now cleaning up these creep tumors off on the far side as a new line of a Sentries and Immortals are making a move in. All right, Immortal and Sentry now pushing their way down. It looks as though a third base may be established by first. Meanwhile, Roaches are trying to figure out where they can go on a map as, yes, another Zealot is coming in for a drop. Zergling is now trying to snipe down. The Zealot will be able to do exactly that. Sentry getting picked up just in time as the Warp Prism with those upgraded shields from 40 to 60 or 40 to 100 many, many moons ago is able to escape. All right. Coming back around, what is first's follow-up play going to be? Army compositions, we can see a much, much larger gas-heavy army coming in from first. Those immortals going to be very important. But we are now seeing a transition into infestors. If those infestors are able to land off that fungal growth and prevent any perhaps retreats, that may really, really slow down those immortals. The only thing good for those immortals is that they are surrounded by stalkers, sentries, and, and Zealots, meaning that the Zerglings are not going to be able to take them down all too easily. Zerglings are upgraded 1-1. One, one. They are forced to back off as the Zealots are upgraded 2-0. You can see that the Zealots and the Immortals doing more than enough damage to take down those units there. Another wall of units coming in from first. First making it very difficult to charge in into the third base as the Zerglings being forced to retreat. Two Zerglings go down. But still, very, very strong play coming in from first. What is TLO's follow-up going to be? Harvester count 61 to 54. As TLO is backing off, Immortals uh, should be able to snipe down, those, uh, snipe down those units here. As, oh, what is this? A Warp Prism just beyond the sight range of TLO. That is a huge, huge, huge miscalculation. As the, the units are now going to be engaging in the center. No, the Immortals... 
Sentries and Stalkers now once again backing off TLO versus First. Who is going to come out on top as we now see a Zealot drop coming into the main base. Main base, Zerglings are trying to back away. Um, does the Warp Prism perhaps suspect something? It's a trap. He knows he's going to get out of there and perhaps retreat and regroup. All right. Infestors now with a good deal of energy already up to, I believe, 150 on some of those Infestors. That will be two Fungal Growths. Fungal Growths. I can't even say that word. Growths. I can't. Fungal. Yeah. It's, you see, I, I've never had to make the word growth growth plural before, so it just sounds funny. Zerglings and Roaches now trying to come in. Immortal is now coming in as well. You can see all those Zerglings and those Roaches are not in a good trade at all. And TLO, with his own army split apart, not doing that great of a job. Stalkers were able to blink forward, and I believe this is just going to be the beginning of the end for TLO. Yeah, TLO, realizing that he could not take this game, gives the GG a little bit premature, but then again, he knew that first was just going to come over the top with a much, much larger army. And I got to I gotta say, first playing extremely well, some force fields down off here and here. I didn't even know it was possible to trap a, a queen in that position there. Knowing the exact size of a queen. Knowing that those queens would not be able to escape. Definitely hurting production and economy. Giving first enough an advantage to come back in at the 15 minute mark. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one in this series. Please stay tuned for game two.